this video and no other video on YouTube, trust me I've checked, will cover everything that you possibly need to know about Ableton Live's audio effect limiter. Please note that limiter is not available in the light edition of Live. So Ableton's manual calls the limiter a mastering quality dynamic range processor that ensures that the output does not exceed a specific level. This is basically saying that regardless of how loud of a signal you send through the limiter, the output of the limiter will not get any louder than what you have the ceiling set to, even if you have the gain cranked up all the way. A limiter is pretty much an extreme version of a compressor. Just take any compressor and change the compression ratio to a high or infinite value and you pretty much have yourself a limiter. It's generally accepted that any ratio above 10 to 1 is considered a limiter. The gain knob lets you raise or attenuate the signal coming into the limiter by 24 dB. Unless the signal is loud enough to be limited or the ceiling is low enough, the limiter will have no effect. Before I start working on a song, I may put a limiter on the master and boost the gain so that I don't push the individual tracks too loud. It's a lot easier to lower the gain in your live set master if it's too loud than to go to every individual track and return track and lower them one by one. When it comes down to the final steps of mixing and mastering, you definitely want to have plenty of headroom. You don't want your master track to be constantly peaking before or after you add any effects to the master track. Below ceiling, we have stereo and left right mode. When you're in left right mode, it's functioning as two individual limiters with independent limiting for each the left and the right channel. If one side peaks, then that one side gets processed by the limiter. When switched to stereo, it applies the limiter to both channels whenever either side hits the ceiling. Ableton warns that in left-right mode, it allows for more compression, but may distort the stereo image a bit. On the left side, the look-ahead chooser decides how swiftly the limiter reacts to a peak. The release knob below it sets the amount of time after the signal drops below the ceiling before it returns to normal. I like using auto because it does a good job analyzing the incoming signals and adjusting the release. If you are not confident in using the release, just use auto for now. And last, the meter on the right allows for a visual representation of how much limiting is taking place. I feel that anything over 6 dB is overdoing it and may cause audible distortions. So as I said earlier, one of the first things I use when I create a new song is uh, I put a limiter on the master track. So this will prevent it from clipping. I don't know if you've ever really heard clipping, but try just clipping the master track and having a whole bunch of sounds going at once. And it just sounds really distorted and gritty. The information is being chopped off and you are missing out on some things and it just sounds bad. So by putting a limiter, it just stops that immediately. Boost the gain anywhere from maybe five to you know 15 dB. That way, you know, if I boost it, let's say seven dB, and my song's playing right now, you know, it's just hovering around like one or two dB of uh, limiting, and it still sounds pretty good, it still sounds loud. That way I just, when it comes down to the mastering stage, you see over here all the way to the right, the master track is hitting the very top, but when it comes down to the mastering stage, I turn the limiter off. I have a good six dB of headroom right there, and it looks like it's going down to 12 or 15 at some point, so I have plenty of headroom to work with. Two other limiters I'm familiar with are the Pro-L by FabFilter and Ozone 5 by Isotope. The most obvious difference between these and Ableton's limiter are that these have additional and more advanced features, but at the cost of a higher price tag. The Pro-L has a gain control, gain reduction meter, Look ahead and release, just like Ableton's, but Ableton lacks the attack setting, dither, oversampling options, and doesn't come with a histogram that shows audio levels and gain reduction over time. Ozone has a threshold, which acts like the gain control in a way, margin control, which is like the ceiling, attack and release settings, 
transient recovery, stereo link, dithering, and much, much more than the standard Ableton limiter. If you're interested in talking about limiting for mastering, you can check out some of my other videos on that or just leave a comment in the comment section and I'll get back to you with that. If there was something that you wanted me to cover in this video but I didn't, uh, also leave me a comment. If you like this video or the music featured in it, check out Soma. I'll put some links in the description. That's my artist's name. And don't forget to subscribe for more engineering, production, and Ableton videos and tutorials. But thanks for watching, everybody. Never stop making music.